Hello, Harrison, how are you? Hi, teacher. How was your day? I um, feel great. Um, it's, it was nice. Uh, I was studying and there is and there are a few times. Okay, great, great for the countable and countable. Good. Yeah. And do you have any questions? Um, yeah, with the topic um, for today, mm -hmm. um, I yesterday and I don't understand. Okay, so the countable and countable is a little confusing. No, for the the problems in El Salvador, I heard or some. Yes, yes. So when you describe a problem, you can use there is or there are. If you describe a problem with yeah. uncountable, it's going to be there is. As an example, um, El Salvador has a lot of uh, cars. So we, we say there is a lot of traffic, right? Also, yeah. the traffic create a lot of noise. Today or yesterday, they say they are going to stop all the buses from honking beep beep and the motorcycles from their sound okay because the problem in El Salvador there is a lot or there is um we can say a lot of noise okay those are the ideas for to describe the problems with uncountable with uncountable uh Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And remember, if the problem is with countable, if the problem is plural, then there are. So in the buses, maybe the buses is there, there are not, there are not enough buses. Uh, maybe this is a problem because there are a lot of people in the bus is not enough. Is this, is this a little bit better? Is that okay? Yeah. Um, yeah, now I understand. Okay, good, good. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Okay, how is everyone? We were just checking to see if you have any problems or questions in the platform, or if you have any questions about the class of something you didn't understand from yesterday. <laughs> Hi. 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 I think that the teacher in the platform is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh. hey, so boring. You, you know the funny part? The teacher in the platform? The teacher in the platform no, is, no. The, is the owner. It's, but it's boring. Yes, I know, I know, it's funny, but he's, today I'm going to explain to you the problem. <laughs> he tries to do his best because he wants to make okay. sure everybody understands. But don't worry, that's the idea. The video is there to, to make it so everybody can understand. No problem, okay? Well, excellent. So now we're going to begin. If there are no questions, we're going to begin with our partners. 
reviewing and practicing the information from yesterday. Yesterday, we wanted to describe things like problems around El Salvador, right? Um, so we are going to describe problems, but also we need to describe solutions, okay? So what are some solutions? Well, I'm going to share my screen with you so we can see a small video before we begin. This is going to help us to be able to describe problems and solutions. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express problems that exist in a city. For example, there are too many cars in my city. When we're okay, so we already know from yesterday that we use there is for uncountable and there are for countable. The important is we need to use this. Here, we can describe the solutions. What do you think? Ah, the solutions, as I in, in our chat, we said there, there, are, um, there are not enough buses. That, that's one that we were talking about. There are not enough buses in El Salvador, or there is too much noise, right? Or, or there is a lot of noise, I think I said in, in the chat. So what can you do? Ah, you can give recommendations. There should be more buses. There should be less noise. There should be uh, more parking. Uh, the problem, there isn't enough parking. And the solution, there should be more parking, as an example. Here's how we can, con we can construct it, or we can make the sentences. We use there, there is or there are. Remember, countable, there are, uncountable, there is. And then you give the solution to the problem that your partner says. Let me go back just a little bit. There, okay. So what do you think? Oh, there should be, and then your opinion. They should have, we, they, they should uh, do, they should make, whatever you think, okay? So for me, in El Salvador, not enough hospitals. The hospitals are bad. The, the, health, the health system is bad. There should be more doctors. There should be more hospitals, okay? Or maybe jails. Maybe you say, oh, there should be more, more jails, <coughs> more cárcel de mujer, more, car more marionas, what, okay? That's the idea. Whatever you think there should be, okay? Does that make sense? So to give recommendations, you can give there should or your opinion, okay? Here we have Thank a couple more. We also can say, for example, here, we need, we, yes, yes. It's correct to say, uh, for example, in El Salvador, there is a lot of crime. It is necessary to improve la laws. Laws, laws, no say. Laws, it's necessary to improve laws. Yes, it's correct or no. Yes, the, the, we need to improve the laws. The or law. we should. Yes, or we should improve the laws, correct. Is that okay, Karen? Or Carla, I wasn't sure. Yes, teacher. Okay. Ya me cambió el nombre. I don't know. Yo no puedo ver. Ustedes ven lo que yo veo. Uh-huh. There you go. Good. I have a question, too. Tell me, tell me. Uh... The word a lot of is an another of quantity too. The word a lot of is the uh, the synonym of many. Only many, not, not many, many or much. There, that's why we use is for is for describing the quantity. But we can use it like another of quantity too. A lot of. You can say a lot of, and you can use for countable or uncountable. There are there are a lot of cars. There is a lot of traffic. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So as you can see, we can use also too many, too much. Oh, what do you think is the problem in El Salvador? Oh, there are, maybe for you, there aren't. There aren't enough parks. There aren't enough bicycle lanes. There aren't enough police officers, there, whatever. And then you give the solution, okay? So right now with our partners, we're going to practice giving or saying what are the problems in El Salvador 
and describing what we think are the solutions. Any questions before we begin? No, okay, perfect. So, okay, let's make some groups and let's try it then. Okay. Ah, uh -huh, Maybelline. I put you into the groups. Teacher, estoy teniendo problemas de conexión. Okay, okay, Maybelline. Vamos a intentar a ver si te puedes unir al grupo para probar. Okay. Okay. El tema del grupo es, uh, hablando lo de ayer, el there is y there are, describiendo los problemas que tenemos en el país y las soluciones. Okay. Okay.
Okay. Any questions with there is, there are, the problems, the solutions? Okay. Let me listen to some people then. Let me see. Let's go with Catherine Giselle. Catherine Giselle, tell me some problems and solutions for El Salvador. The traffic and uh, no, ah, the job. I need more opportunities for the, the job. And what is the problem? La falta de trabajo. I am the silo in English. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Catherine. Got employment. Catherine. Okay, I think Catherine got lost. She got maybe it got something happened with her internet. Okay, so we have the problem is that she says falta de empleos, right? So how do we use it with the grammar? It's very simple. We say there are no jobs in El Salvador, for example. Okay, this is the problem. We are using the grammar. There are, why are? Because jobs are plural, right? No, there is. And what is the solution? What is the solution for there are no jobs in El Salvador? Create uh, more opportunities. Okay. So, okay, we need more. Then we need more opportunities, need more, right? Or more opportunities. Yeah. Okay. So then we use again. There should be more opportunities, for example. You see how we use there, there is, and there are? Yeah. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try another one. Let's see. Um, let's try with uh, Maybelline. Maybelline, give me a problem in the solution. Go ahead, Maybelline. Estoy tratando de pensar en algo. Uh -huh. mm. y, y, so, no tiene que pensar, solo decir lo que dijiste en el grupo. No, es que no, no puede decir nada porque como no, estaba teniendo problemas de conexión. Híjole, ok. Entonces y, no. Y, ¿Escuchaste? ¿Escuchaste el grupo? No. Mm, poco. Ok, Escuché solo decir uno de lo que escuchaste entonces. <risa> no, 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 no. Puedes así, puedes, puedes decirlo como Catherine, no te preocupes. Puedes decirlo como Catherine, que lo dijo en español. Nosotros te ayudamos, te ayudamos para poder formar no, Tranquila. No escuché a Catherine porque también me, es que me está sacando la plataforma, pero lo, entonces puedo decirlo en español. Decirlo, te ayudamos, tranquila, Maybelline, no te dé pena. Ok. Podría ser como que en El Salvador, bueno, al menos en San Vicente, donde yo vivo, las calles no están señalizadas, como no hay semáforos para, para el tráfico. Yeah. Usemos eso, excelente, muchas gracias, Maybelline. Y eso queremos, usarlo de tu comunidad, usarlo de donde tú vivís. Entonces, vaya, semáforos, semáforos se dice stop lights, stop lights. Entonces, ¿cómo creen? Que, ¿Quién me puede ayudar? ¿Cómo le vamos a ayudar a Maybelline? ¿Cómo, cómo sería la, la oración? No hay semáforos. There are no there are lights. Ah, there we aren't. can say traffic lights. Or traffic lights. Correct. Okay, there aren't. Voy a poner en paréntesis lo que son palabras adicionales que son común, pero no son obligación. Okay. Va a estar en el chat. Okay. There 
are there aren't any stoplights. Okay, there aren't any stoplights. ¿Qué es la diferencia? No hay ninguna luces. There aren't any stoplights. Okay. Simplemente el any nos está sirviendo como énfasis, pero hemos, eso hacemos. There aren't stoplights in San Vicente. Okay. ¿Y cuál sería la solución? Maybelline. Um, que los ponga. <risas> Excelente. ¿Cómo, decís, ¿Cómo decimos en inglés que lo? Que lo ponga. ¿Cómo decimos? Ya lo vimos un par de veces hoy mismo. Hoy vimos, ya vimos cómo decir eso. ¿Qué palabra they debemos de usar? They should. Excelente. They should qué? They should. Put? No. So, right. They should put. ¿Qué vamos put a decir? They should put. Put the stop light. Stop light. Excellent. They, they should put stoplights. Así de fácil es tener el problema y la solución. Ok. Y así es como usamos countable and uncountable para describir problemas en nuestro país, comunidad o vecindario. Thank you, teacher. Eso you se podría haber maybe. finalizado con, perdón, se podría haber finalizado con the put them or the put it. Sí, podemos decir put them porque ya sabemos de qué estamos hablando. Uh -huh. Pero de put it, no, porque no estamos hablando de una cosa. Estamos hablando de varias hey, semáforos. Uh -huh. Exacto. Por eso es por uh -huh. Daniel, sure. buena yeah. que tener guardería allí. Tener un montón de niños. Bro. No, lo que pasa es que la niña está molesta y es, es especial. Entonces se pone así. Uh -huh. No está molesta. Eso es lo que yeah. me está dificultando escuchar ahorita. No, no hay problema, no hay problema. Yo dije, Daniel, anda trabajando en guardería. Uh, ¡Qué bueno, oh. qué bueno! <risa> no. All right. Para mí, eso es algo que falta en El Salvador. En otros países, las guarderías son gratis y son reguladas por el Estado. Es parte de los impuestos que uno paga. ¿Cómo puedo decir eso? ¿Cómo puedo decir yo eso, guard, que deberían de haber eh, guarderías? Daycares es la palabra. Daycares, correct. There should more would be uh, there should be more more good. There should be more daycare. Right? Baby, take care, take care, baby. There should be more daycares, guarderías. Mm -hmm. Daycares or nurseries. Uh -huh. También a veces usan la palabra nurseries. Uh -huh. Good. It's okay the topic? ¿Estamos bien? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Now we are going to make sure that it's okay with our partner. We are going to do 2.5 knowledge check. Uh, which is correct, which is correct. Look at the countable, uncountable. Use many, much, fewer, more. Lo que acabamos de estar practicando, vamos a ponerlo en práctica. 2.4 with our partner. Para este ejercicio, solo hay tres minutos. Solo tres minutos porque nada de Tim Marín, solo de llegar a dar las respuestas.
Okay, Yancy, you ready? Number one. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, Yancy, go. Which is correct? The correct is there aren't there are many no there aren't too many police office in my city okay no there aren't no. too many police no. officers in my city no. okay no no yeah no, no, okay. there aren't many there aren't many two police officers in my city no yeah me no, okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> There are enough, police enough the second one yes the second one okay well think marine i see there i see there think marine no problem no problem <laughs> osman osman number two what is number two osman hmm. osman uh, first i think the first the first one more highways this one okay all right no problem <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey don't worry don't worry christopher christopher what's number three uh, hi everyone i think that the uh, there is too much pollution in my city okay there is too much pollution in my city good loose loose what is number four um less nice i can't sleep at night there should be less noise all right excellent and maria marta ayala what is number five Okay, no Maria Marta Ayala. Okay, no problem. Let's take a look. Um, uh, dice, teacher, no me escucha. Yeah. No, ya ahora sí. Ahora sí, ahora sí. Uh, um, yo, I think, um, fever. 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 Okay, I think, I don't oh. know. Fever. It's okay, it's okay, okay. Okay, let's see. Oh, uh, here we are. The questions here number two. El de Ting Marin salió correcto. There aren't enough police officers in my city. Number two, more highways. Number three, there is too much pollution. Number four, less noise. In number five, no is fewer, is more. more. Qué? Sorry, teacher. No, no, don't worry, don't worry. ¿Por qué more y no fewer? Porque estás diciendo que deben de construir más carreteras, carreteras. y no menos carreteras. Okay. You know, highways, highways son carreteras. Yes. All right. Good. Now we continue, guys. Now let's go on to lesson 2.6. 2.6. Let's see. Karen Melendez, please read the class objective. Dios bendito. Ahorita. Jesus Santo, learn, don't worry, you can do it. Learn how to ask and answer direct question in English. In this lesson, practice using indirect question by discussing a city or new destination. By the end of this class, you'll be able to form polite indirect questions such as, well, we tell me where the bank is. Do you know where the nearest ATM is, can you tell me how often the bus is from? And do you know where I can catch the bus? This lesson will help you seek information using politically correct English. Thank you very much, Karen. Thank you very much. Only the pronunciation for this word, and this is the same. Remember, the word is polite. Polite. Correct, polite. And here, grammatically. 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 Excellent, Karen. Very good. So we are going to look at indirect questions. No es lo que ustedes creen. En español suena como, ah, preguntas indirectas. No, no es exactamente eso. Simplemente es 
una forma de ser más amable. This is the idea. Indirect questions. No ser tan brusco, sino que, ah, amable. That's what we mean by indirect questions. ¿Ok? No es que no le vas a preguntar a la persona, sino que le vas a preguntar de una forma amable. En vez de, do, uh, vamos a usar palabras como could, can, do you know. Estas son los indirect questions. Okay. Here we have a few. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to about a city. You're I'm sorry. I need some. Hang on. Let me put. We don't need all of the speaking. We need the video. There we go. Okay. Here we have the indirect questions. Here, what is the difference? The direct questions are the WH. What? Where? How? When? Esos son los directs, que son directo. Nada de amabilidad, nada de que tengo tiempo, sino que boom, ¿ok? Y después, indirect questions, una forma un poco más amable. Entonces, en vez de usar, where is the bank? Ah, could you tell me where the bank is? Where are the restrooms? Do you know where the restrooms are? Fíjense dos cosas. Uno, la expresión que usamos al principio, y dos, el verbo to be o el auxiliar. Fíjense que el verbo to be lo ponemos al final. Where the bank is. No lo ponemos como la pregunta, where is the bank? No ponemos como, where are the restrooms? No, at the end. And if the auxiliary is do or does, look, do or does, boom, disappears. No do or does. Okay. But the verb with S, for example, okay, the verb, um, it's okay? Yes. Okay. The idea is to be nice. This is the idea for indirect questions. How do we make them? We use the expression. The expression, could you tell me? Do you know? Can you tell me? These are the different expressions that we use. Then the WH word, the subject and the verb, no the auxiliary. Look here, no auxiliary. That is the difference, okay? We put at the end. If we have a verb or something is at the end, no, like the normal question, where is the bank? Here, where the bank is, okay? Where the restrooms are, the same, the normal. Is with singular, are with plural. It's okay? Yes. Okay, the same here. Other questions, could you tell me, can you tell me, the same, okay? Okay, nuevamente, ¿por qué usamos indirect questions? ¿Por qué creen que usamos indirect questions? Para sonar, para sonar because because need to, to, to be more polite. To be kind. Correct. To be kind, educate. to be polite, to be nice. This is the idea for indirect questions. What is the expression I put in the chat in this moment? Could you tell? Could you tell me? And then the information, right? Or the other question, do you know? And the information, right? Or the number three, can you tell me? And then the question. Okay. ¿Cuál es el punto clave gramáticamente? El auxiliar, si es el verbo to be, va al final. El auxiliar, si es do or does, desaparece. Yeah, in past, you need to put the bear in past, the less in the in the the last. When is a question? Okay. The same, the same. The, if if it's in the past, the auxiliary disappear. In the past, the auxiliary disappear. For example, the same question. Make a question in the past. Make a question in the past, Essie. For example, okay. Oh, I, I asked you one example. 
No, no, exactly. Say that. Give me the question. Da, dame la pregunta. Dame una pregunta. No, no con, no indirect. Una pregunta normal. ¿Qué pregunta quieres saber en el pasado? Um, ¿A dónde fuiste ayer? Ok. So, entonces, en inglés usamos Where did you go yesterday? Correct. Esta es la pregunta normal. Correcto. Yes. Okay. Yes. Y para hacerlo indirect, usamos una de las expresiones. Ceci, ¿Cuál expresión te gustaría usar? Ella okay. parece. Uh, could, could you tell me? Ok, could you tell me? Perfecto. Hacemos esa. Could you tell me where, where yesterday? You went where yesterday? Se fijan que como el clear como es como es en el pasado. Ya mi verbo tiene que ir en el pasado, pero el auxiliar lo mismo. Puff desaparece. Where you went. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me where you went, you went. yesterday? Desaparece el did. Desaparece el did y el verbo lo ponemos directamente en el pasado. En pasado. Mm -hmm. Eso es específicamente la pregunta de Ceci para el pasado. ¿Verdad? Pero si es presente, continuamos con el verbo en presente. ¿Ok? Okay. Okay. Entonces, ¿qué van a hacer? Así como hicimos con Ceci, como hicimos con Ceci, es necesario hacer las dos formas. Yo voy a poner una pregunta, la voy a poner normal y mi compañero o compañera lo va a poner en indirect questions. Vamos a hacer un ejemplo para que quede claro. Imagínense que estamos en el grupo, en el chat. Ok, yo pongo, ok, ok, alguna pregunta, a ver, vamos a ver, alguien me ayuda, así trabajamos juntos, ¿cuál sería una pregunta que podemos hacer? What did you eat yesterday? Ok, quieren hacer, lo quieren hacer en el pasado, ok, perfecto, ok. Ok. ¿Cómo lo vamos a cambiar? ¿Cómo lo vamos a cambiar con? En este caso vamos a hacer eh, Can you tell me? Vamos a usar Can you tell me? Póngalo en el chat. Quiero que lo escriban. Quiero que lo escriban. Así vamos a ver si de verdad lo entendieron. Can you tell me what? 15 segundos, 15 segundos, que le quedan 14, 13. Nada de Tim Marín, nada de estar esperando que alguien lo escriba para anotarlo. Uh -huh. Julio, no. Me perdí, no estoy. Ah, no estoy. Aquí estoy. Carla, se te fue la U, pero te entendí. Ok. Se me, me comí una L. Exacto, ahí, ajá, pero no hay problema, ya le entendí. All right. Así pueden, así es la pregunta. Can you tell me what you ate yesterday? Ok. Ahora, practiquemos una del presente. Ok. Por ejemplo, ok. When did you go to the beach? No, no, no. no el presente. El presente. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Ok. Algo fácil. Ok. Póngalo, póngalo. Quiero ver. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Write it, write it, write. La pregunta es, what do you do? Cámbiamelo, cámbiamelo. Can you tell me? Could you tell me? Uh -huh. Can you tell me? What is the pollo campero? Uh -huh. Correct, Julio. That is correct. Ah, los okay. demás solo están copiando wow. Julio. Ya estuvo. Ah, aquí está. Uh -huh. Can you tell me what you do? Ajá. Uh -huh. Exactly. Okay. 
Uh -huh. Y así es. Entonces, la persona va a hacer la pregunta y el compañero o la compañera lo va a convertir en indirect questions. ¿Es ok? Indirect. Yeah. Indirect. Okay. Yes. Ok. Vamos a practicar Indirect. cinco. Cinco preguntas. Indirect. Okay. Indirect. Se los voy a poner aquí para que esté claro. Van a ser tres. Indirect. Three. WH. Questions. Y van a ser two. Yes. No. Questions. Necesito que puedan hacerlo con diferentes tipos de preguntas. Ok. Dos pueden ser en el pasado, pero tres tienen que ser en el presente. ¿Por qué? Porque no es normal preguntar en el pasado con could you tell me, can you tell me, do you know. No es. Normalmente es en el presente que se utiliza. Llegas a un lugar, llegas a un restaurante, llegas a una biblioteca, llegas a un... A, al, a Bianca, llegas a la inmigración, no estás preguntando de la semana pasada, estás preguntando dónde están los baños, dónde está la comida, dónde hay ventas, dónde, qué horas son, dónde está el, todo eso. Por eso es que no se usa normalmente en el pasado, pero se puede. All right. All right. All right. Ok. Eh, con yes or no. Two questions, mean two questions with yes or no. Y el yes or no, acuérdense. Yes, yes or no, no past, no past. Present. Mm -hmm. Use the present, think in the present. Okay. Five and five, remember, five and five with the partners. Miguel Luz, you okay? Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay. Any questions? Alguien que no está seguro si le salió bien o no? Yes, we have a problem with the yes no question. Okay. What the, because you respond, you answer. Uh, yeah, you respond yes, only yes. Uh, no, no, no. How to make question. the question? What is the question? Uh, okay. Are you students? Okay. So, can you tell me? Uh -huh. can, can you tell me you are students? No. No. Can you <laughs> tell me? Can you tell me? If you are studying. Correct. Well, if you are a teacher, a question. Well. Entonces, acá con este verbi, el are, ahí queda o pasaría al final? El, con el cual? El, el verbi que está acá, el to be, perdón. Eh, ahí está en el chat, ahí está en el chat. Del, can you tell me if you are a student? Entonces mi pregunta era si quedaba siempre ahí o si pasaba igual que con el do y el das, que, oh, no, perdón, que, que se ponían al final, en, la de, en las questions. 
Ajá, se pone como oración. You are a student. Ya no se pone como pregunta. Are you a student? For example, uh -huh. si yo digo, could you tell me where the hospital near her is? Ahí sí. Uh -huh. Correcto. Con el WH pasa al final. Y sin el WH queda ahí como está. Ah, pues digamos que tenemos la pregunta. Is there, normalmente, is there a hospital? Para que sigamos el mismo tema, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Okay. Is there a hospital? Okay. Y en pregunta, in the right, can you tell me, okay, if there is a hospital? Lo ponemos como que si es oración. Una oración, ah, okay. There is a hospital. Uh -huh. Esa es lo, la diferencia del WH y el yes, no. Uh -huh. Más o menos le captamos, Yancy. Yes. Así le digo. Go ahead, Miguel. Go ahead, Miguel. I, I, I wrote uh, two yes or no questions, but I'm not sure if they are okay. Okay. The first, the first one is, could you tell me if the bank is open? Okay. Can you tell me if the bank is open? Correct. It's correct for the yes or no question. It's correct. And the another one is, can you give me the terminal location? Correct. Another one. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. I, I have a dog. Yes. No, no. That's good. That's good. Mejor pregunten y queden que, que la pueden hacer correctamente. Pero la tele no la puedo ver, ma. No, ¿La cual? Dicho, si tenemos la opción de saber si el office está cerrado a las 5, podemos tener la respuesta en no, está cerrado a las 7. O no, no es cerrado. Pero yo quiero ver el office. Ok. No, no entendí nada. Había como... como Tres personas hablando a la vez o se escuchaba así, no sé si era una tele o qué. What, what is the question? Okay, dale. Aquí. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I have a family here. Okay. Tell me, Ana, what is the question? Okay. Do you know if the post office closes at six? Perfecto. Okay. Entonces, can you tell me? Okay. Podemos hacerlo de diferentes preguntas. Te lo voy a hacer así como la tenés vos en, en yes, no. Can you tell me? Okay. If the post Sorry. Closes at six. Can you tell me if the post the post office closes at six? ¿Por qué? Porque aquí no tenemos el auxiliar. Porque el auxiliar ya no es el verbo to be. Y cuando no hay el verbo to be, desaparece. Acuérdense con do, does, did, desaparece el auxiliar. Okay. O la otra forma. Can you tell me? Un poquito diferente. What? Can you tell me what time the post office closes? Okay. Similar, aunque un poquito diferente. Uno estoy confirmando a las seis y el otro quiero saber a qué horas. Los dos me dan la misma información. Diferentes formas de preguntarlo. Ok. ¿Anybody else? Mister, uh, when I can say uh, there is coffee in this restaurant, okay. can you tell me? Uh, I can use if. Correct. Okay. Can you tell me if there is coffee in this restaurant? Excellent. Okay. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Porque usaste el verbo to be. Y con el verbo to be lo vas a hacer como oración. Si hubieras usado el do, 
entonces ya no desaparece. Pero como usaste el verbo to be, ahí queda. Por ejemplo, yo te pregunto, do you have coffee? Lo similar, do you have coffee? Pero en vez de usar el verbo to be, uso do. Entonces, tengo que decir, do you know, or can you tell me if you have coffee? Desaparece porque uso el verbo do, no el verbo to be. There. Correct, Daniel. That is correct, Daniel. Can you tell me if there are many buses here? Okay. All right, guys. Así que ya tenemos una mejor idea. Mañana podemos repasar y practicar. Si tienen un poco de tiempo, les recomiendo ver los videos en su totalidad, ya que aquí en la clase tratamos de no verlo para que aprovechemos el tiempo practicando y usándolo. Pero si tienen tiempo, tienen dudas, les sugiero ver todos los videos para poder hacer los indirect questions. ¿Ok? okay. Tenía una pregunta yo. Okay. All right, guys. Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye